Have you ever had a vehicle you worked on for days and it gave you so much grief, you felt like taking an ax to it? I thought so. We have a great project for you today. This is a 1966 Ford F-250 custom cab, and it's been here forever. You can see just how buried this thing is in the ground. I mean, that it's buried up past the bottom of the rim. And you'll notice here, something's been digging under here. See that? It's, it's all dug out. Some kind of animal or something's been living under this thing. Um, but this is a, a very unique truck. Um, it's a uh, 66, which is the second year of the frame and chassis for this style. Even though it looks like a 64, it's very different in its under, undersides. It's got the uh, directionals above the headlights, which I think gives it a really great look. It is a V8. This emblem is not a V8 emblem. So we're not sure what's going on there. Um, We'll have, to, we'll have to look at that later, see if there's a different color under the hood or something. Um, the owner is selling it, so I told him, hey, I'll try to get it running for you. It'll certainly be worth more if it's running. This is the second year of the twin I-beam suspension. That's what this emblem here is supposed to say. And this suspension was used right up through, boy, at least 79, a very long time. Um, these mirrors are likely aftermarket, as many of them were. The custom cab, which has a lot of neat features in it. So the custom cab. First off, the window is broken, so I can't get too deep in here. This is very, very wet and worn as a result. But the custom cab has things like dual armrests instead of one just for the driver. It's got uh, a dome light, and it's got the dash surround. It's like this engine turned finish. It's pretty worn, you can't really tell, but it's an engine turned finish, sort of like the 70s Trans Ams had. Pretty neat. It's got a huge mouse house going on in the glove box, huge. Ford emblem right here, ingrained into the, uh, oh look, that is so cool. Ingrained into the seat, look at that. That's not the V8 emblem either on that. That is really interesting. Another feature of the custom cab are these zipper pockets. Now, until I saw this truck, I had never seen these before. So we Googled these. There's a set on eBay right now, just these pieces for both sides, $375. <laughs> I'm not the only one that thinks they're rare. The clutch is clearly a little messed up. Uh, it almost feels like it's not connected, but it probably is and just something I'm going to need to look at. It's got a key, which is fantastic. These old Fords took a tiny key. My 59 is the same way. Let's take a look behind the seat. Nothing really uh, exciting back there. Um, some gaskets, some felt, or looks like a Felpro gasket box, but no, oh yes, there's a gasket in there. There's a gasket. Hmm. Looks like an oil, yeah, that's an oil pan gasket. Maybe it's got a leaky oil pan. No, that, they always leave a clue. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. They always leave a clue. Yep. Yep. And then the seatbelts. Yeah, it's, uh, it's got seatbelts and what were these, Christina? Standard on 65, is that when they started? Um, I don't know, I don't remember the year, but they, they did come standard on Amazing. 1966. So those Amazing. are the original seatbelts. Amazing. Let's check the... Oh, be careful. I know what this is gonna be like. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's got that unmistakable sweet smell of ancient gas and this has a lot of rust in it yeah i was gonna say i don't think i've ever seen one that rusty it's yeah it's it's bad um but you have to expect that so we're obviously not going to pull off this tank we 
brought a tank, so we're going to pull off that. Um, check this out. I mean, that is solid. For a truck that's this dirty and this covered, that's pretty solid, as is the quarters. But look at this tire. <sighs> totally cracked and very buried. I'm not even going to bother trying to date code the tire because I know it's going to be too old for date coding. The bed, um, I've seen worse, right? We've seen a lot worse. Yeah. Um, it's usable. It's got some problems, but it's usable. When these Fords get really rusty in the bed, the bed sides move around. Um, if you look like here, you do this and the bed sides move around. This one doesn't move at all. So this is still pretty solid for a truck this old. I wonder if the tailgate works. What do you think? Oh, all right. It does. <laughs> Unbelievable. It does. They, they also re-engineered the tailgate for, I think, the 65, 66 model, and they made the, the tailgate stronger. Yeah, it's double walled. Yeah. So it could hold up to, was it one ton? Yeah, some crazy number like that. I'm like, I yep. can't imagine what you would put on there that was one ton. Whereas on my 59, it's literally just single wall. Mm. Um, and it does not have a single latch. It's got the chains on either side. Right. So this was an advanced vehicle for the time. Um, very important piece there. This last saw the road in 92 and the owner has verified that. So it's going to be a challenge, um, but we're up for it. <laughs> it's got uh, dual exhaust, which is super interesting. I wonder what the mufflers are. I can see them. It's got glass backs on it. So when this runs, <laughs> note the optimism, uh, it's going to sound really neat because the exhaust is not rotted off, at least the part I can tell. This side, similar story, um, relatively solid, but we can't get too close to it because of the wood pile. But that's all right. That's not gonna get in our way unless I have to change the starter or something, which I am worried about. I make an attempt to open this hood. So the hood will not come up. Um, so we're gonna try to lift it as far as we can, put this under it and we'll just have to live with it. And maybe over the day, the hinges will loosen up. But I've even tried a pry bar on the hinges and then I'm moving. So we've got some damage in here from critters. We've got the battery cable that's been chewed on. We've got some plug wires that have been chewed on. Um, there's some wiring issues. This wire is just hanging here. It's not connected to anything. Maybe it's been chewed off. What about this one? Is this the same way? Yeah, this one's the same way. These are both for the oil pressure light, or oil pressure gauge. So we kind of want those to be hooked up and working. Um, but I'll take care of that. This side, oh yeah, here's some more chewing. Look at that. They like these boots. But that might have kept them away from the wires for the most part, so that's good. It's manual steering, manual brakes. So the hood, which we suspected, is not the original hood. No. So how did we know that? Well, this emblem is the six cylinder emblem. And this is a, obviously a 352 V8. So Christina immediately thought the hood's changed and she's right, look at it, it's blue. It's blue, so at some point it was changed. A couple of other things interesting about this engine, 
it's got headers on it so these headers run into the glass packs I was talking about so this is really gonna sound neat let's check the carb linkage oh, that's frozen solid that is frozen solid yeah that's gonna be a problem should we check if it's seized yeah <laughs> I mean you got to right yeah yeah all right. Oh, it's funny. It's got this must be an aftermarket fan. It's got bendable blades. Oh, it's can you believe that? No. It's not seized. Holy cow. It's not seized. How is that possible? Mm. <laughs> not that I'm complaining. Um, well, before we turn it anymore, we're gonna get some oil in those cylinders. It's amazing that it's unseized, really. I'm pretty excited about that. So let's let's see what the oil looks like. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. It's a full quart low and very dirty. It's always better on the second pull. And same here, but it, it is is bad. It's bad. If this thing fires up. The oil's going to have to be changed. Yeah, we've got lots mm. of gunk in there. Lots. Um, this engine was clearly worn when it was parked. Clearly. This is an important moment. Let's see what we find in here. I mean, this can sometimes make or break getting a vehicle started, depending on what's in here. But since the engine's not seized, I'm thinking it's going to be pretty good. Yeah? Yep, yeah, let's take a look inside this thing. Yeah, normally they're not covered, so that's nice. Yep. Wow, I'm shocked. Yep. Yep. It's I an mean... oil bath. Well, there's oil in there. Yep, it's an oil bath. You know, the carb looks pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, it is all jammed up, but we'll put some penetrating oil on that and see what happens. I'm going to do that 50 times today. So Christina discovered that this thing might be a camper special. Oh yeah, that's a CA for sure. Look at that. It is a camper special. Oh, I can see the rest of it. Yeah, yeah that's what it says. Oh, that, 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 really, that really makes this even more special. I've got one of the plug wires off. This is a little nerve wracking because something that is this rusty been sitting that old. We do not want to snap these plugs off in the head. But luckily these Fords are very easy to get at the plug. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, don't it say wasn't that until super you tight. See, don't say it's beautiful until you see what it looks like. Well, if I had to guess, it's going to be full of oil. If I had to guess. Now, I was just talking to the owner and he was telling us that there was a huge black snake skin in the front seat. Oh my. Well, the oil on the outside is the Cree oil. Right, because I sprayed some Cree oil around here. Yeah, but, but the other... It's not bad. Look at that. Yeah, that why is, is not this, bad. Why is it big chunky things like that? It's what I hit on coming out. Oh, You know, okay. it's so dirty around okay. the hole. But that's not bad at all. Man, I hope they're all like that. <laughs> Look at how nicely that cleaned up. Seven more to go. Yep. <laughs> All right, this is the second one on the driver's side. And as you can see, disregard this, because that's what I sprayed in. But if you look at the electrode, it's got quite a bit of oil on it. So I suspect that this cylinder was burning a bit of oil when, it, when the truck was running. There's something I'm noticing on each one of these plugs as I pull them out. It's, I find, very interesting. If you look, 
See the oil in the threads? Every one of these has oil on the threads. Why is that? Because I've squirted Cree oil down into the, around the plugs on each one. And it's creeped inside the threads to help loosen them up. This is the only one that it didn't get all the way down, but it was close. Every other one I pulled out on this side, they've been completely coated, so they've come out easy. Okay, I've got my mystery oil. I'm just putting about six squirts in every cylinder. I don't need to load it up because it's not seized, but I want a little bit of lubrication in there. I think that's a snake hole. This is the first one out of the passenger side. A lot of deposits on the insulator inside. A little bit of oil too. I would say this is the worst so far because of the amount of deposits. It's the same type of plug, so I don't think it was changed at a different interval, but it looks like it was. This is the third one on the passenger side. Look at that weird corrosion. That's concerning. That means it's super dry in the piston area. It looks pretty good though. See that? Mm -hmm. It's burning well. That looks pretty good. Okay, good. All right, plugs are out. Got some mystery oil in the cylinders. So now we're going to check some other stuff. Like what's going on under the distributor cap any guesses no Ooh, not bad not bad at all yep dirty but not bad at all Does it move? um yep it was it was funny it was stuck just a hair but it moved now and it's a made in usa rotor the rotor is very corroded but we'll fix that Oh yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of corrosion under here, but we'll fix that. Um, it's got a good quality set of points in it. So all good there. This cable is as hard as a rock. Look at that, it won't bend. At this point, it won't even bend. May have to change that depending on how things go. Yeah. Yeah? There's a yellow light on, so yeah. On the other side? No. Um, and there's not no just this one light okay all right i'm gonna to try to turn it over okay through the key it's in neutral yeah, in neutral let's try it wow i'm surprised that solenoid works yeah so we gotta get the hammer I have to hit it like this. Okay, what I'd like you to do, the key. I didn't think that was going to work. The okay. starter is sick, uh -huh. right? You can tell the starter is sick. I don't know if it's going to turn it over with plugs in it, but it might. Ooh, we got spark here. That's good. Let's see if we got it at the points. No, mm -hmm. nothing. Did you get a new piece of sandpaper? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Okay, we're good. We got spark. The carburetor is hopelessly seized. I was hoping it was the gas pedal, but I, I disconnected the gas pedal linkage, and as you can see, it's fine. It's just completely seized.
Okay. Looks good in there. Hmm. Now look at this. It doesn't even look that bad. That's not what I expected. I expected to see all kinds of rust in here. It's not there. Nothing of the sort. So we're going to work on this for a few minutes, see if we can free it up. If not, I brought a carb with me. That did not help. It's still stuck big time. All right, this carb I had on the shelf from another job is going on. All the plugs are in. Fuel system's getting ready to be hooked up. Carb is in. Points are sparking. So we're getting close. I'm gonna grab the uh, fuel tank now, and then we're gonna try to fire this thing. We're gonna try to fire this baby up. First time since 92. Got my trigger hooked up. My gas ready. I'll put some fuel in the bowls. Now let's see how Ford Motor Company does. The starter is very weak. It's a concern because it's so weak. But let's see what we get. I'm even going to use a little shot of ether. Let's go. I'm not seeing any spark out of the spark checker. No. Nope. All right, I think we found our problem. Um, the wire going to the distributor must be shorted out somewhere. And that's why I'm not getting spark at the points. Because it just made a ton of smoke. Okay, that's actually a good thing. Because it's this wire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this wire right here is not in very good condition. Looks like the mouse chewed it right there. And maybe right there. Right there where my finger is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that destroyed anything or not. Hopefully, you should be able to see spark in here. Yeah. You got it? Yep. All right. Yep. Yay. We've got, we've got spark now and we fixed the connection on the solenoid. So we're gonna try it again. I'm hopeful that this is gonna do something. Whoa. It hit. It hit. Yep. Yeah, I can smell it. Can you? Yeah. Yeah, it's firing just a little bit. Sometimes it's all you need. Yep. Oh. Solenoid's getting hot. It's starting to smoke. Do you want to pull that? Yeah, the starter's drawing a lot. Trying to turn this over. Oh boy, it's getting close. Come on, baby. It's getting close. getting there no smoke yet mm -hmm. i'm gonna put some more in the bowl wonder if we have a clog did you check for um vacuum leaks um i did okay i did um the carb is already plugged because we used it before so i think we're good there 
Come on, baby. Come on. So where was that smoke coming from? I don't know. I don't know where that was coming from. I really don't know. protecting your face you were scared of those belts well one of them already split see this oh it did yeah yeah Woo! let me see it does man Woo! where is it at look at it oh wow yeah that i would have been protecting that face as well oh my goodness that's the only reason i let it quit the other one is just as bad All right, I guess it's time to check the coolant. Yeah. <laughs> yep, it's definitely dry. If it starts again, fingers crossed, I'm going to go to the box, so keep an eye on what's going on underneath the hood, okay? Yeah, so I was watching the plants on the ground where yeah. they're blowing and all of these right here. That's the they're blowing the most. Yeah, yeah, it's probably rusted right after the header because yeah. it's loud. Yeah. It is very, very loud. So we've checked for vacuum so leaks. You you've checked for vacuum leaks. Right you've here. you've taped up some hoses so yep. the water's not coming out anymore. Yep. So all right, let's see what we got. Yeah, let's try it. What'd you find? Uh, okay. It's completely disconnected at the header. Uh-huh. Completely. So this side, there's no problem. The passenger side, uh, unless it's at the very tip, I don't see any. I don't see how there could be a problem there because there's nothing open. <sighs> you say there's nothing coming out of the passenger side? No. Well, that's a problem. Because it should be. No. Um, let me hold that up for you so you don't hit your head. I'm all right. I'm just going to stick it in the tape. Uh-huh. See that? Yeah. See all that? Mm hmm There's a lot of stuff in there. Look at that. Yeah. Acorns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the more you, oh no, he broke the stick. I was going to say, the more you put it in there and move it around, the more it was coming out. Yep. So that, maybe it's not a vacuum leak. Maybe four cylinders are plugged up. Because Christina said she didn't see anything coming out of the side. How's it look now? It's. Still pretty bad. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, I don't see it. Maybe you've loosened it up enough to where it right. might blow it out. It might blow it out. Let me stand back here and I'll try starting it and we'll see. Okay.
nothing coming out of there. I even put my hand in front of it. So I've been sticking this hose in as far as I can, and look at that. There's so much stuff that the end of the hose is getting plugged. So it is a real obstruction in here that we need to remove. Yeah, I've gotten all the way up to the bend and it's clear now. Nothing. No. I put my foot there and and no, Burton put his hand there. There's nothing. Plug tight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we know what the problem is. Yeah. So we can't get the the exhaust freed up. So I'm going to disconnect the header, but I've got to get some air in this tire. So I've dug it out. You can see how deep it was here. I've dug it out, and we're going to see if it holds air. I have the the, the thought that it's going to hold air. The tire is, is old, but it looks like it's in decent shape. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but... What a bummer! It came right back out as soon as you put it in. Yep, I was getting excited. Let's try the other side. I cannot believe... I think that's going to hold enough air. Isn't that crazy? It is. What is that sticking out of it? Is that a stick? Or is no, that just a rubber. piece of the tire? No, okay. that's rubber. That's all the tire. Yeah. This is a tight fit. Watch out for snakes, babe. Yeah. Drew just said, what about the spare? Smart thinking. Didn't sound good. No. <laughs> no. No. I think it's loose around my world. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I can get one of the bolts loose right from here. It's so dark in there, babe. Yeah, but I can do one right from here. How's it doing? It's, it's going to hold. It's up a bit. Yeah, it'll hold. I just, because of the hole, I can't get it up I super know. high. I know, yeah. Oh, well, the sun's going down. I think it's about 5.30 in the, well, I not guess evening. We're moving everything, and uh, Burton is going to bring his tractor down. We're going to try to pull this out of this hole because even if we get it here, that's about three feet higher than over there. Um, we're gonna see if he can't get at that tailpipe. So, wish us luck. Okay, it's day two, and as you can see, Burton's been very, very busy. When we left this truck, it was still sunk in the mud. We had a couple of tires filled up, but it wasn't, it wasn't doing too well. We failed to get it out of where it is. But he has purchased these new rims with some rollers, and he's jacked it up and actually got most of the wheels removed. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing the progress has taken place. Yeah, and not only that, but are you ready, guys? He moved all the wood. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we were just saying, I can't wait to be that age so we had that much energy. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have that in, much energy now. So, as you can see, the back wheel has been changed. All we've got to do, he's got the, 
the front lug nuts loosened up. All we have to do is jack it up, get this wheel off, put one of the replacement wheels on, and uh, then try to get it out of here. Yeah, and he actually, these, these uh, tires and rims. They're pretty cool, actually. They, they are. They look good, they're cool. I also brought a fan belt, um, a radiator hose, and if we need them, a new set of points. So this is gonna be a fun day. Let's get going. All right, I'm gonna uh, reposition the jack. It's at the end of its travel. So we've got a jack stand under there now. Yeah, now that's a, a jack that the owner was using and it's from a 72 Dotson. Yeah. How interesting, right? Yeah. And it's been raining for weeks, so it's quite muddy. Go. All right, we got this wheel up. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing we haven't seen before. No. No. Wow. That was a heavy. But success. Success. All right. Hopefully we're deep enough. Yep. Oh, great. Whew. Yeah. All right. Let's get those nuts. These lugs are tough to get on because they're not the right lugs for these wheels. Um, but they'll do for now until we get this thing out of here. I wouldn't drive on these. Never drive on, on aluminum wheels that have lugs that aren't specifically made for those wheels. Before we let it down, I need to know if I have to disconnect the collector. Because as you know, the exhaust pipe's plugged. But I brought a plumbing snake. I'm gonna try to clear the exhaust pipe with that snake. Are you out of breath? Yeah, that was hard work. Okay, so what do you see? Well, right away, there's a couple of acorns in the muffler. So I'm gonna put this in the muffler and see what happens. You know, that would be a safe place for them to hide. Yeah. So, that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna start the truck and see if we cleared the exhaust or the muffler and see if that helps any from last time over here. Okay, I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm going to have to disconnect the collector. Something in there is still completely plugged up. Um, I think this is fate, making sure that I get under this vehicle at least 10 times. That seems to be the theme lately. Hey, Richard. Yeah. So, you, what are you going to do? You're going to spray it with the Cree oil. Yeah. And then what else? Take it off. Disconnect the collector from the exhaust pipe. You know, it's funny, it's called the collector because it's literally collecting nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that was the original intention uh -huh. behind that name, Maybe. but it fits here. I don't think I can see light through this. Can you see light through Hold that? on, I hear nuts coming. No, there's no light. What's that? Oh, wait. <laughs> maybe that's maybe the end you should do. Okay, that's it. You released it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Wow. Oh no, I thought you had. There's more. Wait, yeah, there's, there's more. more. If you like now. I think we got the majority of it. 
you know what's left may be the house with the fabric and the yeah. fur yep yeah. but there's what we got yeah all of this i'm gonna fill up the bowls see if this thing will run on its own now Sound is coming from where I pointed it out. Maybe. And that is a weird sound. That is a weird sound. But it runs now. <laughs> Okay, so you think you found the problem of the leak. Yep. And... So we had two problems. We had the plugged exhaust and a bad vacuum leak. What'd you find? Well, I don't know how this happened. Is that the gasket? Yeah. The new one? Yeah. Watch your head. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. But the gasket's completely gone. That's that's a new gasket. I, I don't know how that happened, but hmm. let's take this out and see. There's nothing wrong with the intake. Nothing. Let's match it up against the old carb and see if, if we it's can different. reuse it. Okay, so Burton and I heated the base of the carburetor and we're able to free up the throttle plates. You gotta be careful, you can't heat it like crazy, but we got it warm enough, we got the throttle plates free. The choke is acting a little weird, but I don't have a rebuild kit with me. So we're gonna try it and see what happens. That other new carb just isn't gonna work, so we're, we're stuck with this one. So for those of you that, that are wondering, we took the, the new carb off to try the old one. Sounds better. Yeah. Sounds a lot better. Sounds wonderful. Is your hammer ready? Do you want to tap the float? No, I gotta put fuel to it. Fuel okay. system's hooked up. I forgot my regular system, so we're back to the historical funnel fuel system. Oh yeah. on <laughs> okay so we have tried the best we can to get this um screw from the and this is 
I told Richard that I think I'm going to name this truck Smokey. Okay. We gotta let that cool. Okay. Now, How's that? Yep. Now I got it. Now I got it. Now, uh, go ahead the other way. You got you tighten it? Yep. Okay. Okay, so this has been quite a day. What we thought would be an easy follow-up from the last time we were here has turned out to be quite quite a thing. Um, the belts I brought didn't work. We had to go custom do a belt at the store. Radiator hose didn't fit right, so that I've had to modify. Um, the old carburetor's in, completely freed up. So we're gonna try to fire it up, and the next step is, can we get the rear wheels broken free? They're both rusted. Um, it's a full floater axle, so it's 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 time consuming to get apart. I'd rather just free it up with uh, with popping the clutch, but we don't even know the clutch works, so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Okay, big moment. If we can now get this wheel unstuck in the back, I think we can get this out of here. This is a big, big moment. Try to rock the truck back and forth to free up that wheel in the back. <laughs>
that didn't work. So I'm just gonna try rocking it back and forth. All right, here we go. Gonna rock it back and forth. What's she like? This day has tried his patience today. Oh my goodness. So Burton's been busy. He got actually both wheels unstuck. Unbelievable. Not, you know, not super unstuck, but unstuck. And this is what he found in the front wheel. Back, back wheel. Oh, it was the back wheel. Okay. This is the self adjuster. It's completely rusted away. Never, never have I seen rust like that. And that sits in the bottom of the drum. And this spring, sits there like that on top of it and of course the spring end is rusted off this is gone and the brake drum actually had a rust hole in it um, which I haven't seen so what Burton did was there was a rust hole in the drum he stuck a screwdriver in there and just started pushing the rust out and it was a lot of rust and these things fell out Wow! so this wheel is free which is the one Burton that moves by hand that's, that's the one. this one Okay, and that's the one we really need to move by hand. Okay, and this one is free as well. So we're going to hook the fuel line up, crank this thing up, and see if we can get it out of here. You tell me when. I'm, Ready, I'm, set, action. <laughs> action. <laughs> so we're going to fill this hole in so that way when Richard um, drives the truck, well, hopefully we don't get stuck in that. It's an exciting day. Well, Richard's uh, cleaning the window. I had cleaned a little bit, but he says he needs it all clean. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not going to be able to see, so <laughs> I need to be able to see if I'm not going to have any breaks. All right, I'm going to start by filling up the bowls. All right, this is our gas tank here. I can't, can't see it. Oh, okay. I'm going to turn the gas on. Okay, gas on. I feel like I'm gonna fire an old airplane. Fuel on. <laughs> See if this girl will go. Whoa! You just had a huge, huge um what? spark. I mean, Where? it looked like a fire Here? was getting ready to start right there. Here? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That loosened up with time, which is Okay. Goes. Second attempt. So, this solenoid is corroded again. Three weeks ago, this thing started immediately. Now, we're having a backup in progress and clean stuff up again. Because it's so moist down here, everything corrodes fast. All right, so problem found. The eyelet came off the end. So I'm not gonna mess with this anymore. The eyelet fell down somewhere in the mud. So I've got this one, which is heavier gauge, so it's gonna pass more current. And it's going to violate my favorite rule of putting black on positive. <laughs> so I get to get all those people back to do this. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn the key. You ready? Go again. Oh, that didn't sound good. Is that the starter? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's the starter. That hasn't given us any trouble. It has not, but it decided to today. It's working on the on the truck. A branch just fell right there, and it, it's 
it's a decent size. Let's just say if someone was standing here, it would have hurt. So, and that just came down and it's thundering. So we're like the postman, you know, from the olden days, not the new days. Neither rain, sleet or snow or thunderstorm will stop us from getting a car rescued. All right, the start has got to come out. It's just shot. So it's Cree oil time on these starter bolts. Let me get it for you. You know me and starters. Yeah. I might as well just pull the starter out on the way to work every day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So there it is. Yeah, see this this header pipe right here? Well, not if you don't hold right the light the there. You gotta hold the light there. It's right in the way. Yeah. So I gotta try to loosen this up. Okay, so really bad lightning close to the truck, so we're gonna head in and head back out. But you know, it's humid out here. According to my hair, the humidity is at 85%. This is that time of the year. We cannot catch a break. Okay, so finally, the thunderstorm has stopped, but unfortunately, my concern is that, can you guys see? There's a huge puddle there, one back there. Good stuff. It's wet, and I don't know what this man is thinking. Good stuff. I told Richard that I know how you guys hate part twos, but this might have to be a part two. Well, let's just see what happens. All right, we're gonna try to get these header bolts off now. Because it was raining so much, the Creoil's had a time to soak in. It's been, been a couple of hours. It's still pretty pretty tight, but look at that. You got it? I got that one. Oh. Let's try the next one. Fingers crossed. Boy, am I glad that worked. You know, I've been using this stuff for a while now, and there's just nothing like it. Nothing like it. We let this sit for a couple of hours while it was raining, and now everything's coming out beautifully. All right, this is last the boat. last one. This is the one I was afraid of cracking of breaking. So I figured I'd shock it with a hammer and it worked. You take it around there then. You got it. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, there there is a ray of sunshine that is beaming on the starter. <laughs> and as soon as I saw that, I knew it was gonna come out. All right, let's see it. Okay, right, let's see it. There it is. Uh, this this case here has got a huge dent in it, so you gotta see if that's performance affecting or not. Time someone complains about their age. See, that was quality father son time right there. <laughs> Next time somebody complains about their age. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, you're acting like you're 35. Oh, I feel like I'm 35. <laughs> <laughs> Working on cars to do that to you. Yeah. Gonna, just to be I'm safe go before here. they spend time uh -huh. putting the starter in, we're just going to make sure it works. That scared me. Sorry to be scared. <laughs> wow, I did that. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, that's yes. Heart is in. We're ready to try it. You look wore out. Yeah, I'm wore out. You guys wore out too? <laughs> I think so. All right, let's fire her up. Okay, 
Good. Now we got to put water in it. <laughs> <laughs> what if it doesn't work after that? Oh no! So I'd be cleaning inside, but I'd it not. I think it looks a lot nicer already, don't you? Need some water, but you know, in all in all, it looks a lot better. Okay, Richard. Oh, drama. Yeah, we don't need the drama. We have had a lot of drama. So here we are again. know how much you guys don't like part twos but this is gonna have to be a part two it's running it's move it moves a little bit but it, it's just too wet here we got incredible rains today um, it's just mud everywhere so we can't get it out like this um, there's no tread on the tires so that's not making it any easier but we're determined to get it out of here and get it cleaned up so it can be ready for sale Okay guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate all the support. If you haven't already, we would truly appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel. We and would. <laughs> yeah, be sure to check us out on Facebook and we have some more great things coming in the weeks ahead, including yeah. really the good stuff. burnt Chevy yeah. will be coming home in September. <laughs> thanks everybody. Thanks. We'll be chatting with you in the comments. Thanks. Until then, we'll, I'll catch you when we get down here. <laughs> I'm getting eaten alive. <laughs> and. Yeah. And in September, the burnt Chevy is coming home. So be sure to mark your calendars. And until then, we'll be chatting with you in the comments. See ya.